Hello everybody! Welcome to this channel. I'm Medium Kim. Thank you for joining today. Today the topic is about hospice and using medicine for at the end of life. So that's the topic. We've got a couple announcements before we get started, so let's get into it. First of all, I want to announce Jen of Jen's World Tarot. She's getting much better. Thank you for all of your um, prayers, Reiki, on all the healing that you sent her. She said she really felt it, especially on Saturday. I talked to her yesterday and she's doing, uh, she's on her way now. She's even starting back to work a little bit. Okay, number two, I have a friend, Thayer, who is in this community. She's offering aura paintings. Now, and I believe these are acrylic. I'll show you mine. Da da da. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, and at, for a small fee, she is uh, offering this and she would love to practice. She's an artist by, by trade, but uh, she's got a new thing, just like all of us are opening new um, opportunities in the spiritual realm. So um, anyway, I will put her link below if you're interested in that. And um, I have a new class. Susan and I are offering a new series. It's called The Psychic Hustle. Woohoo! Bumpa! <laughs> um, and it's a series of four weeks. You can either come once or twice a week and we will gather together and do some fun amazing practice exercises to boost your intuition and go beyond your comfort zone where you are now and some things that you just won't even believe can happen okay so that's going to happen for the the psychic hustle the link is uh, below and that starts next week all right and then i in honor of the psychic hustle going to give away a book uh the last breath um, I've talked about this before. I'm a co-author. This is uh, mediums from a mediums written from around the world, and it's really a lot about intuition and stories, stories about intuition and synchronicities and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stories. So I'm going to give this away. If you'd like to be entered in that drawing, um, three hearts under this video, and I will draw ne my next video. Okay, all right. So now to the hospice medicine. And the reason I'm bringing this up is um, <clears throat> I have, we, there was an issue last weekend that um, was like, oh my gosh, so the family's been on hospice for over a year, has not, has been against any pain medicine or anxiolytic, meaning anti-anxiety medicine. They thought her mom would, um, it would make her sleepy, sedated and cause her to die. So here we are, uh, she's declining. She has no meds at home. She's not comfortable. She's very short of breath. Her oxygen saturation is down to 80%. She's very anxious. Um, she's also having chest pain, but nothing to give her because the family is against medicine, that kind of medicine. They're okay with other kinds of medicine. So I just want to just tell you this because um, just to educate because how important it is to have comfort medicines at the end of life. Uh, some people, some families are worried that their loved one who's passing will become addicted to the medicines because usually we're talking about pain medicine, which is usually an opioid, normally morphine or oxycodone. And also we're talking about, usually it's lorazepam, sometimes it's Valium for an anxiolytic. Um, they're worried the family, the person's going to be addicted, but the, th the, the thing is, you're not going to be become an addict at the end of life. If you're an addict, you've already been an addict. You're, just not gonna, you're not gonna switch over like that. You can become dependent, your body can get used to it, but you're not becoming an addict, okay? So there's that, that false belief system. Um, also, people believe that medicines will die, make you die sooner. A pain medicine is gonna make you, like the idea is that we're trying to hasten the death. In hospice, we do not hasten or slow down the death. We allow the death to happen naturally at the time that is right for that person. So um, it doesn't do that. I, it would, uh, um, but sometimes people say, oh, well, my mother was on morphine, then she died. But the thing is, remember, they're already dying and they probably had morphine because they needed it for pain or shortness of breath. 
So it's not, they didn't die because of the morphine. Just like the same thing about eating. They stop eating because they're dying. They don't die because they stopped eating. So same with, again, with the medicines. Um, so I just wanna encourage you to think about that when we are passing or when we're transitioning, the idea is to be comfortable. And because when you're comfortable, one, you're gonna have a better quality of life, and two, you're gonna be more willing to eat, more willing to engage if you're feeling better. God, if you can breathe and if you're not having pain. If you're having pain and you're short of breath, how can you even talk to anybody? I mean, you don't want to. So it's really important for the quality of life. And dying can be painful, even if nobody's ever had pain. I say, oh, they've never had pain before. They've never had shortness of breath before. But when you're dying, you do. Because if you're in bed, that can be very uncomfortable, staying in bed for days after days, or even for a whole one day, right? Um, and what happens too, the brain stem is not as effective, so there becomes shortness of breath. Um, the heart rate changes, it goes really fast, that's uncomfortable. If you can't breathe, then the heart rate's going fast, and if you're having pain because you're in bed, and also you're sweating because your body temperature's going up and down, that's uncomfortable. So that's the reason for the pain medicine. And I will say that um, morphine and oxycodone are the most common, um, and they both work for pain and shortness of breath. So both of these opioids, as with any opioid actually, they open up the artery, arteries in the heart, the whole body, so that each breath is more efficient. And it, the dosing is not so much that it's, it's not depressing respirations, but it's just opening. Now, if you gave an overdose, that does depress respirations, but that, the point here is just to make somebody comfortable, not to give somebody an overdose. Okay, again, it just helps bring down the, because people start breathing fast, they can't catch their breath. All right, so it's really better if, if families can understand the reason that we're using morphine or oxycodone. Um, lorazepam is also helpful, especially for shortness of breath, but also anxiety. Most people have a tiny bit of anxiety as they're crossing over, unless you're just a, a, like a yogi, a, a, a spiritual guru, most people do have some anxiety for whatever reason. I mean, it's a new adventure, right? And by the way, over this weekend, um, had a, a man, I talked about it last video, how we use modes of transportation to cross over, whether it's a horse or whether it's a boat or a train or whatever. Well, I had a man last weekend and he's from the Navy. His, his vision was a big Navy ship. That's how he was gonna go. And it, so it was awesome. And you know what's another interesting thing? He had a lot of ascites, a lot of fluid in his abdomen before he departed. And after he departed, it went down. But he didn't. It didn't go. I mean, it didn't go outside of his body. That is something I don't I have no idea. I just feel like he let go, and somehow his belly went down. That's interesting. But anyway, on the subject again of pain medicine, the idea is keeping somebody comfortable. Comfortable because when you cross, you want to go into the spirit world already kind of feeling okay, as good as possible. Um, because then I think it's just easier to jump in there and enjoy the new adventure, the new ride, to go freely across rather than, uh, <clears throat> you know, having anxiety and pain. And plus, anxiety and pain are a hook into the body. So it's like going to sleep. You can't sleep if you're having a lot of pain or anxiety. Same thing when you're transitioning. So again, I just encourage you guys, I, I probably think I'm preaching to the choir here. You guys, I'm sure are probably on board with this, but I just wanna sit, let you know, just in case, because I hear a lot of people who don't understand. And, um, you know, they say that they've never heard that before. And oh, by the way, morphine is from the opium plant. So it is a natural medicine. They, they extract it naturally from the plant. Oxycodone is a synthetic, but morphine can build up too much in the body if somebody has kidney disease. 
So usually then we switch to oxycodone. So just to let you know that, okay? Um, there's other medicines out there too. And um, anyway, so I just hope you're doing okay. I hope to see you again. And thank you for joining me. I really appreciate that. If you like this video, um, if you have any comments, please comment. Please also, I would love suggestions, what you want to hear about, whether it's hospice, energy medicine, mediumship, um, you know, developing your intuition, anything like that. I, I um, would love to address that in a video for you. So thank you and blessings. See you next time. Bye-bye.